Hello and welcome back to KSP Real Solar System Campaign. This rocket is a new rocket that I prepared based on the design of the rocket, rocket we tried to launch into orbit in the previous episode, which was, I think, fell short of about 1.5 kilometers per second of delta V. In this rocket I increased the size somewhat, but also removed some weight from the second stage, from the actual satellites, um, which has boosted my delta V to 10.8 kilometers per second of delta V, I think, um, which is a lot more than we had uh, in the previous rocket, and uh, I think uh, we need a, a little over 9 kilometers per second of delta V to reach orbit, something like 9.3. So this should be more than enough to actually reach orbit. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and launch. Uh, ignite the engine first, very important. And then release the launch caps. So... This rocket basically uses the exact same engines as the previous rocket that I built. But I removed, I replaced the avionics package in the second stage, which was way too heavy, or way heavier than it needed to be. Uh, so I cut the weight of the second stage with about half a ton. I also, I also reduced the size of the battery. And that gave us a big, big improvement to Delta V. So, uh, I'm confident that this will be able to reach orbits unless we have some critical mechanical failure or human error of some sort. So, uh, I may have turned a bit too ag aggressively here, but, uh, Ah, I think I definitely did. I'm afraid that my rocket is going to burn up. Ah, no. Well, let's see. Maybe it will make it. So, Apoapsis is 50 kilometers now. Um, it certainly has the Delta V necessary to reach orbit, but. Uh, Flight trajectory may not be ideal in this case. So I need the first stage to go above 150 kilometers um, to achieve an orbit with a periapsal above 150, basically. Um, it will manage manage that just fine, it seems. go. 200 kilometers, that is definitely enough. So we've gone up to 190 kilometers now and it's time to launch or ignite the second stage. First need to detach the first stage, fire the eulogy thrusters and then fire the engine. We're off. Hopefully, I didn't ignite this too late. Nah, I think it will be fine. So, this is just going to do its job. And we are now beginning to approach orbital velocity. So, this is definitely going to into orbit. And the periaps is going to be above 200 kilometers. Certainly. You can see the apoaps starting to curve around Earth and we're just going to burn this stage out completely. Not going to... It's going to be a highly or maybe not highly elliptical, but certainly an elliptical orbit. We'll see what kind of apoaps we can get out of this. It's going 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, oh, over 16 million kilometers. That is pretty nice. Now we can detach or decouple. 
the second stage. Just didn't plan quick save there. So... I'm not sure if I have any science experiments we can do here, but... Yeah, because we've already done those. Unless we... Let's see. No, we didn't do the thermometer. So, um... I'm not sure if this is far enough out to be in a high, well, basically high above the earth and gather data from there, if you know what I mean. But we're going to see if there is any kind of new science data we can collect out here. So, just need to skip ahead. We have, um, definitely have enough battery to, uh, do this, I think. Uh, just above Earth, Earth's water. So, no new science data to be collected here. But um, uh, let's just be sure. So we got a sounding rocket above one for fifty kilometers. You place an artificial satellite in orbit and receive data. An uh, uncrewed speed speed rocket. This is one of the automatic missions that are always there. So, uh, yeah, we passed 9,000 meters per second. What we had to do to reach orbital velocity. So this mission was definitely a success. We're ready with a new rocket. And uh, this is basically just an enlargement of the Science 2 rocket. Now christened the Science 3. So uh, this has more than 12 kilometers per second of delta V, which will hope, hopefully be enough to reach um, space high above Earth. So um, let's go ahead and ignite the first stage. Launch. Oh, it bumped into <laughs> the launch clamps. That's not good. I think that may have been a fix. Actually, it bumped us in the right direction. I mean, it bumped us in the direction of uh, where we're, we were going to do our gravi gravity turn anyway. So, uh, damage from stuff. Also, replace the fins with something that's a bit more appropriate for this. So, this, it won't interfere with our launch. I mean, it won't start both of the previous rockets. It did correct for variation. Instead, we're using the gimbling of the rockets themselves to stabilize. And I think I'm inside to shake. It's starting to, I mean, wobble along the length of the rockets. I think this is a bit too long, maybe. Is making it a bit risky to do this trap to turn, but we have to do it anyway. So. And we are losing delta V from this bubble. Luckily, it's, uh, it's not completely stopped, I think. But, uh, I'm not sure if that is just a flaw in the design or if it's, just, or if it's a bug with some of the mods that I'm using. I'm not sure. Just going to turn slowly over to uh, towards the 90 degree axis. Yeah, I, like that one. It's, uh, I don't have to worry about going to orbit this time. I'm just going to launch as tall as I can. I think this bubble might be amplified once the fuel starts running out and we get out to a ridiculous amount of G's. So the first stage got to 5.2 kilometers per second. And we're going to launch the next stage immediately.
get rid of the fairings. We don't need them anymore. And this second stage is just going to burn out. And then we'll see how tall we get. The second stage has burned out. Uh, now let's have a look. Yeah, we got up to almost 11 kilometers per second, which is enough to reach escape velocity actually for um, for the Earth system. So this is going to go into interplanetary space actually. That is way higher than I had anticipated. So um, we are definitely going to gather some uh, data from space high above Earth with this. Not sure if we can gather some space from interplanetary space though. I don't know if this antenna that I have on the, on the rockets actually has the range to do that. But um, we'll find out. We now reached 80, almost 80 kilometers, or 80 million kilometers of course, um, above Earth. And if you have a look at the science experiments, we actually are now situated in space high over Earth. Which is a good thing because our battery is going to run out quite soon. I don't think the battery will last long enough to reach uh, and gather some data from interplanetary space. But we definitely get, got some data here. So we're just going to um, start transmitting all of this. Telemetry. Uh, Temperature and, um, I think we yeah we collected the uh, radiation data now why can't I select I doesn't look like I can select these two instruments here one of them is the press mat barometer oh there we go. Yeah, pressure data from uh, from space, and that is pretty much everything we can accomplish with uh, this rocket. I think um, we can. You can see how far it gets before the battery runs out. But uh, yeah, you can see it draining draining up there pretty quickly. So it will get to about. 140, 140 million kilometers before the battery runs out. And that is far away from, I mean, that's not even close to the moon, let alone interplanetary space. But again, we accomplished what we wanted with this mission, so it's time to go back to the space center. And we now have 38 science points to spend. So, um,. Definitely the survivability, which will take about take away 20 points. Then we can go for. Uh, I don't really. Need... We can go for basic construction. Don't have enough for basic solids, or basic avionics, or supersonic flight. Well, we can go for both of these, and uh, why not supersonic fl flight as well? I don't have any plans to build aircraft just yet, but um, yeah. So the next big thing is going to be um, stability slash early probes, which will un unlock some RCS, which is nice. A stronger antenna, some a film return camera, and uh, of course we have more powerful rockets up here. But yeah, let's have a go and have a look at the missions we can um, do now. So we already have the su success successful re-entry mission, which we want to accomplish. Sounding rocket high. We do want to do this um, lunar flyby. So we're going to accept that. I'm not sure if we're going to achieve that at this point in time. And we'll take the sounding rocket high. 
So her primary mission is now to design a rocket that can re-enter. So again, we'll start with uh, the X-ray detector as the main probe body. Then we'll go for this avionics package. Since we want, or actually, since we want a rocket that can re-enter, we want the biological sample. And then the avionics package. And then we can stick a heat shield underneath that. So that is too small, this is a bit large. Yeah, I think this is the best we can do. Now, the challenge we're going to have is that we need to go into orbit and then deorbit. So, uh, I think we can do the deorbit with um, these attitude jets, which are basically um, RCS thrusters. Maybe if we could stick the tank on there. This is it's not going to be a fairly heavy craft. And we So if we position them like that, when they fire, they will fire down this direction, slowing the aircraft down. So that is what we want, and they run off nitrogen. So this entire craft now weighs 2.67 tons. But we'll see whether that is too heavy or if we're going to be fine with that. If it's too heavy, we can just reduce the amount of fuel in that tank. An antenna, usual science experiments. And a parachute, of course. So actually, I'll put the antenna on the side and then the parachute on the top. So this is not the prettiest spacecraft, but um, it will do its job. Well, actually, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's 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 go with this. The parachute on a bit. I'm a bit afraid that that is not going to be survive. Actually, we drop that and use the avionics package as the main core of the spacecraft. You can stick that is on top like that. This now needs to be. We need to fire. Um... Oh, that is firing in the right direction. The parachutes. Use a this Mark 16 parachute. Right. I don't know how big the heat shield needs to be to. If you do it like that, I think that should be enough to protect the parachute from burning up. Yep, that still has fuel. Like that. And we also need a battery. Let's not forget. So we'll just go for the procedural battery can be something like that I think. Okay so this is the spacecraft we're going to re return to Earth and we'll call this the Progress One. And now we just need to design a booster that can take this thing into orbit. So here we are again with uh, the final design of the Progress 1 rocket, which was, I made no changes to the probe body itself, it's just added this big booster.
below it. Now this is going to be in a tight delta V budget, just a little over um, 10 kilometers per second. But uh, it should, in theory, be enough to reach orbit. Let's see if we can do it in practice. We have ignition. The clamps are released. The thrust to weight ratio in this first stage is not not too good. So just barely able to get off the pad, but that is not a big problem. So I'm just going to let it accelerate a little bit. Maybe turn ever so slightly all around to the side here. So yeah. This has to reach orbit, and then it has to land safely back on Earth with a parachute. So maybe not turn too aggressively here. I think I did turn a bit too aggressively. So that could lead to some problems. So we are now up to 40 kilometers in altitude. And the acceleration is really starting to pick up at this point. Uh, APAPS is at over 100 kilometers, which is good. Um, I think. I think I. I mean, I think I turned a bit too aggressively in the gravity turn early on, and then overcompensated by not being aggressive enough after that. So. This is not an ideal launch, and I think I'm just going to turn it over completely now. Even though this is wasting fuel, I don't have much of a choice, I feel. So, as I said, this was on a tight Delta V budget. Um, so, we'll see how it goes. The first stage, at least got us up to um, 4.5 kilometers per second of velocity. Apoapse is 244 kilometers. Um, but this is just going to drift a little bit before we fire the second stage. I think it's time to launch the second stage now. I'm going to decouple and uh, I have no eulogy thrusters this time because I use a pressure fed um, engine. Of course, you have to use a um, different type of tank for the pressure fed engine. You have to use a service module, which weighs a bit more, so it's a bit of a trade off. But um, if you don't want to mess around with eulogy thrusters and all that, you can use a pressure fed engine. This stage is going to burn for about five minutes, um, but I'm approaching the apoapse quite rapidly. So um, we'll be back in a sec. So we are getting closer to uh, orbital velocity now, but I fired the second stage too late, so we are now losing altitude. We might still be able to reach orbital velocity. It's going to be um, very difficult or impossible, depending on how, how it goes. So, uh, how much double do we have left at this point? 1.4 kilometers. Yeah, I don't know. To be, it's going to be a close call, but the apoapse is now starting to really curve around, and we are still well above the atmosphere, so this might actually work. And we looks like the periapse is coming up, and we are going for orbits. Though so, this was a bit of a uh, tricky situation. And what we're going 
to 150 kilometers and then we're going to Cadiz. There we go. So, um, we do have these thrusters. We could slow us down. The problem, of course, is that we have no way to orient the rockets. So, we are going to fly up to the Ape Labs and see if we can't slow down the rocket to go back into the atmosphere. So we are getting close to the Ape Labs. Battery is plenty. I'm going to deep a couple and then um, so uh, yeah this the second stage is in the way right now, so that is not ideal. Oh yeah, so we need to turn around a bit, because as it is, these thrusters are not oriented in the right direction. I should have... Yeah, I can see the flaws in the design right now. These thrusters should be oriented in different directions so that we could actually get okay, we're going to fire the nano and um ah can we actually recover this i don't know because we need to fire them in while we're pointing in the direction of the velocity vector because they are oriented in the opposite direction but we have no... yeah. So this... the spacecraft is now going to spin around and we need to fire the, these thrusters while we're point, pointing in the rough direction of the velocity vector. But that is going to take some time. So, but we'll be back. We did encounter a significant problem, which is that we ran out of fuel. And we only reach a periaps of 100 kilometers. So we're not going to re-enter on the first orbit here. So we're going to need multiple orbits, I think, to slow it us down enough to re-enter. So, um, but at least we got the orbit into the atmosphere. So um, there is still a hope for this mission. We are in the atmosphere right now. But we're still at 100 kilometers. That is uh, <clears throat> that is not good enough. Uh, so probably what I'm going to do is just uh, yeah, this is not really lowering our a perhaps by that much. I think. So it's going to take a lot of... well, I think we're going to run out of battery before we, before we can make this uh, re-entry. So, but we did get close. And so we are back to make another attempt at building a spacecraft that can re-enter the Earth's atmosphere from orbit. Now, I made some um, modifications to the original design of the Progress 1. Um, for one thing, I increased the size of the the probe body, doubling the amount of RCS fuel we have on this last final stage up here. Uh, but since that also increased the weight of the rocket, I had to compensate for that by adding these side boosters on the side here. And, um, Hopefully, we'll have a little more luck with this launch than the previous one. So, it's time to go for launch. Well, there we go. This uh, rocket has a little... a thrust weight ratio that's a little bit better than the previous one. Thanks to these small side boosters, which are going to burn out before the main rocketeer. 
to start uh, ever so slight gravity turn at this point. The only complication we might have is the stage separation, or a, not the stage separation, but the separation of these uh, boosters on the side here. Let's see how that goes. So far, we seems like we're doing quite nicely. Need to adjust a little bit. To turn a bit more aggressively now. About 10 kilometers now and approaching 500 meters per second. And we are getting close to strap on booster separation. Approaching 20 kilometers. We're almost. Let's there we go, go for separation. The separation went, went nicely. They exploded right behind me, but then they were not supposed to be reused, so uh, that is a successful se separation. Now, Apoapse is at 50 kilometers. So, this looks like it's going to be a pretty smooth launch. The gravity turn uh, seems to have worked out quite well. And um, if you have a look at the delta V status, you can see that we got a little under a minute left of fuel in this rocket, and it's got three kilometers of delta V left, even though it's just a tiny amount of fuel left in the tank because of how, well, basically how rockets work. They. Um, the last bits of fuel in the rocket are always the, um, uh, the the fuel that provides the most delta V because they don't have to push as much weight as much of the rest of the fuel. So let's have a look here. We are at have an apoapse about 110 kilometers now, and. Um, We'll soon get up to far, four kilom. There we go. About four kilometers per second of uh, surface velocity, five kilometers of orbital speed, and the first stage has burnt out. And um, we're not going to launch the second stage immediately. We're going to drift a bit. Get rid of these uh, fairings, and uh, we'll be back in a sec. So now we're getting ready to fire the second stage. First, we just need to decouple this, and then fire. Again, we use this pressure-fed uh, engine, so we don't need any to mess around with eulage thrusters and that kind of stuff. So, this rocket, this stage has five minutes of burn time left. I don't know how close we are to the apoapse, but I think we got plenty of time before we reach that. And, um, well, we're waiting for that. And we are now approaching orbital velocity. And uh, everything so far has worked out just nicely on this flight. And we're cutting the engine. We reach a um, periapse of 152 kilometers and an apoapse of 256 kilometers. And we still had 1.7 kilometers of delta V left in the tank. So that is a fairly big margin. I was, I was still going to dump this rocket because. This doesn't have any ignitions left, so I'm going to decouple this. And um, what does the mission actually require? So uh, 
Yeah, we just need to reach the orbital velocity and then go back. So, we're going to fly up to the APOAPS, fire our RCS engines to go for the D orbit. Here we are. We had to pass the APOAPS by quite a bit because we weren't in range of any uh, radio stations while we're over the periaps. I think, still think it should work out just, just fine though. So I made some adjustments to the engines as well. Um, because we now have um, multiple, well, we have um, RCS thrusters that are pointing in multiple directions, which will allow us to turn and rotate the rocket a bit, which we didn't ha really have that capability with the last one. So we're getting up on the velocity vector and we are firing our anti-direction thrusters. And uh, as you can see, the velocity is, well, the periaps is falling really slowly. And, uh... Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, I was just, it weren't, they weren't firing at all. I'm, I was pushing the wrong button, as it turns out. So now, we are about to make a successful deorbit burn. And we are now well on our way to re-enter the atmosphere, down to less than 120 kilometers of altitude right now. We still have a little bit of fuel left for maneuvering and steering. Uh, yeah, we don't have any connections, so we don't have any control over the spacecraft right now. But we are approaching the ground station at Hawaii, so um, connection should resume shortly with the spacecraft. And uh, periaps is at 91 kilometers. As the atmosphere is starting to tilt the spacecraft back and for forwards a bit. It does look like it's aer aerodynamically stable though, which is what you really need. So that the, um, the heat shield points itself in the right direction. If it didn't, then we would be in a lot of trouble. So we're starting to slow down now. As we approach 100 kilometers, velocity is... Uh, Measured against the surface is less than 7.5 kilometers per second. We're passing over Hawaii now. As the periaps is, has dropped below 80 kilometers. 75. Current velocity is below 100 kilometers. So far, this has gone just fine. The real challenge is to see how the spacecraft will handle all the heat and pressure of re-entry. Um, in the last launch we learned that 100 kilometers was not enough, was too shallow of a periaps to really re-enter in a... Um, uh, well, in one go, basically. This time we went down to about, well, was it 92 or 91 kilometers or so? Uh, I don't, it's definitely not too shallow because we're already on a course to hit the ground. The question is, is it too steep? That's going to be our main challenge. Uh, the heat shield is starting to ablate away now, uh, slowly. But it's going to heat up more and more as you start hitting the um, denser parts of the atmosphere. So we're getting down to 75 kilometers now. And we are really starting to slow down. 
Velocity is below 6.8 kilometers per second. Altitude just past 70 kilometers. We are on the course to hit the Pacific Ocean. The question is, will we burn up or will we survive? I'm not too confident about this actually. I think we're heating up too rapidly. Not sure if this... Oh... That was what I was afraid of, yeah. We hit the atmosphere too steep. Uh, steeply, so... The only thing we can do now is... Um, well, I don't know if the heat shield was good enough. So... We're going to make another attempt, of course. So I think that will have to be for another episode. So thank you, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again in a future episode of KSP Realism Overhaul.